It's not news at this point that another YouTuber called me out for my previous $500 all white gaming PC build. It was a bad one. I have failed you. Elijah's lab called me out on this build and he put together a much better $500 gaming PC using some crazy once in a lifetime deals. I'll have his video in the description. Afterwards, I then posted this video, which was pretty much my redemption where I explained that Elijah left out a lot of important details and my explanation on how it wasn't a good build because of the million things that went wrong. This budget game PC was an absolute disaster, but here we are, we got the build complete. So I ended up building this PC as my redemption. This RX 5700 XT build was not only cheaper at $450, but it also looked better and got better FPS numbers than Elijah's PC. The competition pretty much came to a close at that point. Mission accomplished. But the problem is that my new build was a black and red build. I never actually redeemed myself with a $500 all white gaming PC build. So that's what we're gonna be doing today after a quick word from today's sponsor. Corsair, and specifically the brand new Embaler HS80 Max Wireless Gaming Headset. This isn't just a performance upgrade where they now have a 65 hour battery life, huge 50 millimeter drivers, and Dolby Atmos surround sound, but it's also an aesthetic upgrade as well. On Corsair's website, you can select these different colored custom kits to include blue, red, pink, and gray, and these all look incredible. I'm also personally a huge fan of the adjustable fabric strap design compared to a traditional notching system. These are perfect for my three to four hour PC building live streams that I do every single week where comfort is a high priority. You can check out the HS80 Max for yourself by clicking the first link down in the description. All right, so just as a disclaimer, I'm not building this PC to continue the rivalry between Elijah's lab or anything. And honestly, the benchmarks of his build are probably still gonna be this one. This is honestly more of a personal project because like I said in that original video, a ton of things went wrong. So I feel like it's my obligation to redeem myself with this kind of a build. Everything inside this PC is 100% repeatable and you can very easily find all of the parts and the prices that I did. So this is a super copy and paste kind of build if that's what you're into. We'll start with the CPU. And once again, we just got to go with the Ryzen 5 3600. I'm running out of ways to explain this, but for any budget build under $500, this is simply probably the best way to go. You can readily find these for 60 to $66 on AliExpress and there's a metric ton of them available. The only downside is that you got to wait about two to three weeks for shipping, which is why I buy them in bulk. The two biggest advantages of the 3600 or that it's still powerful enough that you can pair it with any GPU that you're realistically going to put in a $500 build. And the other advantage is that you can pair it with a cheap AM4 motherboard. This ASRock B450M AC R2.0 was posted on a little new egg sale down to $65. And a lot of us in the ZTT Discord server scooped up a bunch of these. I bought three of them. I'm also running out of ways to say this, but if you want to find the best PC flipping deals or just PC hardware deals in general, you need to be following the ZTT deals channel in our Discord server. And that's always linked in the description. Another advantage of the 3600 is that you can use a stock Ryzen cooler, which most PC flippers and builders have laying around, or sometimes they come with the 3600 if you buy them used from somebody, and that's exactly what I recommend doing. Per usual, I spray painted mine all white, and even this smaller Wraith stealth model is enough to cool the 3600. Next up, we have the RAM, and we're going with Corsair's LPX DDR4 kit, which is 2x8 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz. This is a tried and tested kit, and it's been around for a while, but I actually wouldn't recommend copying this selection most of the time. This TimeTech pin Pinnacle Conduit 2x8GB 3200 megahertz kit is always sitting on Newegg for $35 or sometimes even cheaper. The only problem is that it takes about 7 to 10 days to arrive because it's sold from TimeTech directly through Newegg. I purchased this kit all the time and you've seen it on my channel before, but for this project specifically, I didn't have enough time to wait for that longer shipping time. For this build guide, I'm going to allocate $35 for RAM even though I paid $45 for my LPX kit, but again, this Conduit kit is always available, so just go with that. And to polish off this motherboard prep, we have the SS SD, and here's a crucial P3 plus one terabyte NVMe drive. And this one also requires a little disclaimer. Honestly, I'm not trying to make this as nitty gritty as possible with all these disclaimers. I'm just trying to make this build guide as repeatable, repeatable as, as possible. possible. The reason why I use this SSD is because Crucial sent it out for me to use. So it's not like I'm gonna waste it, but you can use literally any one terabyte NVMe gen three drive that you want to. And there's a bunch available for 40 bucks. The pricing is a little funky right this very second after Black Friday and during Christmas time, but you'll see options like the Patriot P3 310, Team Group MP33, and also the P41 Plus for around this price range. Moving on, we get to the power supply, and we're going with the new meta for budget PCs, and that's the MSI A550BN. This has been pretty consistently available on Amazon for 50 bucks, which is a great price to begin with, but it's also rated tier C on the PSU tier list, and still 80 plus bronze, not too shabby. The one advantage of the A550BN over the Apivia Prestige, which is also another meta choice for budget builds, is that other than the 24 pin cable being sleeved, the other cables are thinner 
and more flexible non-sleeved cables. Since we almost always use cable extensions where you can't even see the stock PSU cables, having them be more flexible is a big advantage when you're working with budget cases with less than ideal room for cable management. Packing in all of those Apivia Prestige sleeved cables can get pretty rough sometimes, so this is the one thing that I like about the MSI unit over the Prestige. Either are perfectly fine though in the grand scheme of things. And speaking of those cable extensions, per usual, we're just going with the Easy DIY White Kit that's always available on Amazon for 20 bucks. Now the case that's housing everything is the Sama ARGB Q5-W, and this is my tier S pick for budget white micro ATX builds right now. This one comes in at $54 and it's packing three pre-installed ARGB fans to keep everything simple, a nice front panel that allows for all of the airflow that you need, and somehow this one has been staying available and in stock. Nope. So that was a fucking lie. With the parts that we have inside of here, honestly, a lot of these RGB color options look good, but per usual, my favorites would be white, light blue, and even purple, but we'll talk about the RGBs in just a bit. And finally, to polish off this build guide, we have the graphics card, and here's where we will really see an improvement compared to my previous video, which again, was a huge disaster when we had to settle for a GTX 1060. Ooh. This here is an RTX 2060 Super, and if you've been watching ZTT for a couple of weeks now, you'll know exactly where this card came from. The brand is called MilC, which I doubt I'm pronouncing correctly, and you guessed it, I picked it up on AliExpress. I just made a full dedicated video explaining why some of these white budget AliExpress cards are a good option, at least to some people like myself, and I recommend watching that video if you aren't up to speed. These RTX 2060 Supers have been floating around between $150 to $180 lately, and I sniped mine at $163. There's some disclaimers, of course, to go along with a card like that, which I fully explained in the video, but at the end of the day, this is a budget, all white, and readily available graphics card, and that's exactly what I needed in a build like this. The 2060 Super is still a dominant card for 1080p gaming, even going into 2024, which we're about to see in the upcoming benchmarking section. One thing that I discovered way too late in this process, again, there's always an issue when building budget builds like this, is that you actually can't change the RGB lights on this GPU. I didn't notice this until we started filming, but these are fixed RGB lights, and there's no way to change them or even turn them off. Unfortunately, that means if you do go with this specific model, your case fans will either have to match the rainbow puke color, which still looks good to a lot of people, or set them to all white, and it kind of counterbalances the RGBs coming from the GPU. I personally think that the rainbow puke looks the best, but unfortunately, this does mean that this won't be a true all white gaming PC, but I'm sure there are some other models available on AliExpress that don't have this issue. You could also just swap out the fans as well for like five bucks, but again, I realized this too late. Now, in terms of price to performance, you could do better than this card with about a $120 RX 5700 XT, but unfortunately, there's no all white 5700 XTs on the entire market, including AliExpress. If you want to build this all white PC with a black RX 5700 XT, that would still look amazing and you'll get even better performance, but since I'm specifically trying to redeem myself with a white build, this is what I had to go with. It's also worth noting that the Zotac RTX 3060s are going for $250 brand new right now. Soon we'll see them for even cheaper than that on the used marketplaces, and a build like this would have no problem running a 3060 if you wanted to spend a little more money. But with all that aside, let's jump into some benchmarks and we're going to compare how this build did with my first attempt at the all white $500 PC. First up, we of course have 3D Mark Time Spy, and our new build cranked out a score of 8,424, and this is a massive 92% increase over my previous GTX 1060 build. Now, just to be clear, that does sound like we had an amazing improvement and I did a great job with this build, but unfortunately, it really just showcases how bad that previous $500 build was. Next up, we have Cyberpunk 2077, and we put the settings at 1080p low for the first build and only got 48 FPS, but with this new build, we're about double that with 95 FPS. The Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 2060 Super can certainly handle better graphical settings than 1080p low, but we only kept it at that for the comparison. Same thing with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. MW3 wasn't even out yet at the time of the first video, and here we use 1080p minimum settings with only a 90% resolution scale. Again, we're getting close to double the result here with a now 124 FPS average. Apex Legends is up next, and in 1080p medium settings, we got 190 FPS, which is still significantly higher than our 134 average FPS over the first build. And here's Forza Horizon 5, where the results are a little closer. In 1080p medium settings, our 2060 Super build got 115 FPS, and our 1060 build got 81 FPS. Here's the rest of the games that we tested against the previous build using the exact same settings. Some games like Hogwarts Legacy and Valorant only saw a little bit of an 
increase and some games like Ark Survival Evolved doubled our result. It all depends on if the game is CPU or GPU dependent. There's a huge difference between our 2060 Super and the original 1060, but for gaming, our Ryzen 5 3600 is more on level with the Tem 100F that I used in my previous build. And finally, here's some of the other benchmarks that we didn't run last time, just so you can see those results as well. So yeah, this is a much better build to follow if you're in the market for a $500 all white system. Just remember what I said about the RGB lights on the GPU. And this also only applies to people that are willing to buy a used CPU and GPU on places like AliExpress. If you prefer to buy from more trusted places like Jawa or eBay, then you can still repeat a similar success if you're patient and snipe the good deals. But if you don't want to buy any used parts, then good luck because that's next to impossible at this price range if you want to keep it all white. So hopefully this build kind of redeemed myself and hopefully you guys agree. But if you do want to check out more information about the AliExpress GPUs that I was talking about earlier, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.